everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited today. We are talking about, in this case, it's an underappreciated, it's not obscure, but it's our underappreciated animated film. Uh, we do a series where we, every month we talk about an independent, small, or what we feel like a movie that deserves more love. This is kind of in the same camp as our episode on Rise of the Guardians. I think uh, another movie that people know about, but uh, deserves more love than it gets. And so today <laughs> we're talking about Monsters University and it's a movie that I think usually gets put down in the bottom of people's Pixar ranking, but I really, really enjoy it. And I think it, it deserves a to get a little more love. So I'm excited to talk about it. And I'm Rachel and Stanford's here. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. This is Redemption for <laughs> it is for a and, film that is one that that deserves it you know yeah. i think so chance. i do i think so and it's kind of perfect because just as we're recording this just this week we got our new trailer for uh onward the new film yes. directed this coming From, out next year yeah. yeah that's directed by dan scanlon who is the director of Monsters University. So yes. kind of perfect. <laughs> I think so too. I agree. And yeah. Onward looks really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great teaser. Great poster. I thought. I agree. I would have done a trailer reaction to it, but I was just so exhausted. Uh, I had been to a screening, I think every night that week. And I just I was like, I just, cause usually they end up re releasing trailers in the morning yeah but it was like because i think it did after uh uh nba finals it was, in, it was one during one of the nba the fat first nba finals game yeah. yeah and so it was like at a weird time and i was just like i can't i am totally exhausted <laughs> i cannot yeah. do it i waved the white flag <laughs> yeah exactly it's like sorry <laughs> but i did really enjoy it and i'm very much looking forward to it and uh so uh and I think, like I said, I don't think he gets enough credit for what he did here in this film on a lot of levels. And I, I think uh, the the first Monsters Incorporated is, of course, a lot of fun. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of weird to me because right in the same uh, two years, you had Monsters Incorporated and then you had Ice Age. And they're both basically the same movie they're yeah. both about <laughs> these monster like characters that end up with a baby that they have to take care of and yeah. have their shenanigans and other stuff and and they're both charming i i have no problem but i think what i i'm not saying that i i necessarily i go back and forth but i think there's an argument to be made that this is actually a little bit better it's certainly braver than monsters incorporated the the plot of monsters incorporated is fairly standard as we saw that just a year later you have ice age which is almost the same plot and uh, and this i think it takes a lot of risk and uh, and so i i don't know i just really respect that so it depends on what you're asking me like what is the the better movie or what is sort of the most ambitious movie i might go with this i go back and forth but yeah i really like it i think it's a really good film i i agree with you rachel i think that monsters university takes more, definitely more risks than monsters inc monsters inc is such a wildly creative and delightful yeah film. and but yeah with kind of a this following in the in 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 the genre of like you you got this baby you got this thing you've got to deal with right <laughs> uh but um and, and plus it's a buddy you know the, the buddy pick aspect of, of monsters inc too but it's 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 so it's so clever it's so fun the you know the voice talent of course really makes it and that whole mm -hmm. door sequence at the end too is just such a knockout as far as just animation goes however though you, you turn it to monsters university pixar decides to make a college movie number one which i love that idea you know mm -hmm. i mean I, I love it when 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 pixar and, and disney too but when they decide to take on a a, a genre film mm -hmm. yet, yet this i think it turns the college film genre on its ear you know this mm -hmm. this one has so many interesting things that happen and so it's so non-traditional in how the story goes i know we'll be talking about it 
Um, it's so for me, it's all, I mean, I, I, I'd have to, I just have to agree with you. I think Monsters University takes more risks in, in its storytelling. I like both films, but I, but really the only thing that's similar is that they're set in this world and Mike and Sully are in it and a Randall. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And for a long time, I think they kind of lost it with finding finding dory but for the long time every single one of their sequels was a distinct different genre from uh uh, from pixar because you had your the original toy story which was your buddy movie as you say and then you had the second one which was kind of a road sort of a road trip um and an adventure and then the third one is like a prison escape it's a prison escape movie yeah yeah and then in the cars movie you have the uh the americana one of the first and yeah. uh, going back to the hometown kind of, the, the, of that. the spy movie the, the spy movie for the second and maybe that's yeah. what kind of scared them off of doing that but uh but here you have them the first one being you know with this an adventure with the, this kid uh, and then the second one is this college movie so yeah and and a prequel and a prequel which, which is cool I thought, yeah. so, you know, really clever. Yeah, and they originally really battled because at the in, in the uh, first movie, there's a line where Mike says to Sully, "You've been jealous of my good looks since fourth grade," and they basically they battled back and forth. How can we do this? And because uh, they meet as college students in this yeah. movie, and they were battling, how are we going to do this? And basically, Pete Doctor basically said to him the, the director of the original film he basically said it'll be okay <laughs> let it go <laughs> <laughs> and so i think they have one line in here where they're like oh that's just an old monster expression <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, it's just funny yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah so and from everything i've read pete doctor was completely supportive and uh, of this and uh, and the, the making of the prequel and everything which is which is pretty cool yeah it's cool and and it's interesting too because again you know i i don't even think p doctor yeah he doesn't even have like a does he have a producer credit on on this yeah he's he's an executive producer i'm okay. looking i'm looking at imdb um but you just wonder how much he was involved because again yeah. it feels like it is such a, just a different kind yeah. of film it's just a really different kind of thing. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if it's if maybe he was in some of the brain trust meetings, well, exactly. something like that. Exactly. But uh, I don't. It's it feels like he was he let them do their thing, which I think yeah. is great. You know, and of course now Pete Doctor is the president of Pixar. I know he's the so chief it's, creative officer of Pixar. So he took exciting. For, yeah, for when John Lasseter left, and it is exciting. Mm-hmm. I think that that pixar mm-hmm. is is in good hands for sure just already with those pixar uh, spark shorts i'm just like oh yeah. so excited <laughs> yeah it's great yeah and then after seeing this onward trailer yeah. just, oh wow i think we really could be in for, i mean yeah. clearly all that stuff got greenlit when laster was around but still yeah. you know it's uh it's it's gonna be exciting yeah but I, that's the only thing that disappoints me about when you told me that they aren't doing an animation panel D23. I'm like, oh, and do they, are they not going to have, because I figured though they're going to announce some well, more stuff. I think they are going to announce more stuff. It's just going to be maybe not as much, but, yeah. but, but Disney animation and picture animation are participating in the live action. In the li- and it's just, just, just one big movie panel from the Walt Disney Studios. <laughs> I think so. we'll have to sacrifice our firstborn in order to go to that panel, but we're going to try. Cow. <laughs> Everybody and their dog. I mean, that's, that Saturday morning is going to be insane. You have to make and a deal. at D23. I know. Built the devil. devil. Right. <laughs> Please get us a seat in this thing. Because, I mean, it's everything. You know, they're going to have Marvel stuff and Star Wars stuff. And probably they're not going to announce stuff, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's maybe a new trailer for, you know, yeah. for, yeah. Uh, for uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Anyway, I, I digress. It's going uh, to be crazy. Is but this, anyway. So. It's going to be crazy. But, uh, but, but the doctor should be there, you yeah. know, and, and then we'll be uh, it, talking be. about stuff it'll be cool so but anyway so yeah this movie starts out with mike little mike who is so cute 
I love um, little Mike. What's well, cuter? I mean, you know, again, <laughs> so he's so cute, cute, which you know is is part of the problem in this, and, in this movie in particular. Yeah, nobody can do adorable like Pixar. No one. Uh, <laughs> Maybe Miyazaki. Maybe he can do adorable, yeah, right. but that's it. <laughs> yeah. Because like Baby Dory, so cute. Oh. And, <laughs> seriously yeah and but i think there's an argument to be made that mike uh, becomes wakowski becomes the most complex character in all of pixar uh in this movie because of what ends yes. up happening to him he he really does and that's again <laughs> one of the I think, interesting creative risks that they took with this film and and it makes and it really makes mike was asking this yeah i'm with you this really really complex character this is not a one-dimensional thing or again following the kind of some of the traditional tropes of a college movie yeah. yeah yeah i think so and so he goes to this field trip and he they go to the to monsters incorporated and they go to the scare floor and he is just amazed he is so excited he ends up going over the line and uh and into the into a door and sees the scaring and he just can't believe it he thinks it's so so cool and uh he uh he gets a hat a monster university hat from one of the scarers and he decides that he's going to become a scarer from and he works his whole life and this we'll probably say this a number of times but you just think of how many movies there are for children that tell them that they can do anything that they yeah. can accomplish any they goals can be any you can be anything you want to be yeah. you know and yeah. so what i admire about this movie is that it calls that bluff kind of that we tell yeah. these kids yeah and it says that your dream might not work and yeah. a person that doesn't work as hard might uh might actually get it and you might not and and that's okay because otherwise that would be like a super cynical message if you were like you might fail congratulations but the reason why it works to me so well is that they tell them that the new dream the new person that you are to become may be better and more who you are and that's what the dean in this movie sees right away he sees that he has the wrong she sees that he has the wrong dream yeah and uh, he doesn't realize it and i just think that that is such a bold refreshing oh. message for children holy smokes rachel i mean i i remember thinking that the first time i saw it and then again being you know with this rewatch yeah just being so blown away by it because again what movie since that ever says that kind of message and here's a movie coming from the, one of the most popular biggest animation studios in the world mm -hmm. and they are telling the truth you know they're not putting up some kind of a well then again not that pixar does that necessarily mm -hmm. but rather than making like this college movie and the underdog wins it doesn't happen you know, but it, but it's real life, and yeah. and I just I I just I think it's just brilliant how they how they managed to pull that together yeah. in such a good way. I think so too, and uh, he he's a character that you immediately, of course, not only do you already know who Mike is, and you know that he's you know, you know that him and Sully are friends. But just even as seeing cute little Mike, like you immediately are just drawn to him, you're yeah. rooting for him. And so it can be quite devastating when things don't work out for him and he struggles. But that's good. Kids need to know that there are struggles and that, but that it all, because they might say their, their parents struggle. They probably, you know, who knows, like if a kid watches this and their dad loses a job or, uh, or mom you know, has uh, loses a job or struggles in any kind of way uh, this would be such a helpful movie to watch and talk about talk about how life doesn't always turn out the way that you thought it would but yeah but you have to trust and you have to have faith and so i think it's just great and 
Uh, and so it takes a character that was fine in the original and just adds this whole nother layer. Yeah. And then we'll talk about it more. But the other thing that I love in this movie is that it kind of sh- it dares to sort of shatter the idea that everybody has to go to college and that college I is know, this right is this <laughs> like key thing <laughs> because not everybody needs to go to college and i love uh, that particularly with Sully's character he's being pushed into this peg that he doesn't belong in and so it brings yeah. out the worst side of him yeah yeah i that was a really almost uh, such a shock for me to do that, that they were they brought you know put that into the story because it's 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 a truth you know college isn't for everybody yeah and the wow you yeah. know to make to make that as uh, part of this movie and it's a college movie yeah <laughs> you know? yeah there uh, there's a, a cute little documentary from last year called science fair i reviewed it on my channel for a family movie night but uh where they profile all of these different people that are entering these teenagers that are entering from all over the world in the national international uh science fair and they have one kid in particular who is really great at like making computers and hard drives and stuff like that <laughs> it's beyond most of this yeah. stuff's projects i was like i have no idea what they're doing but boy that's impressive and Anyway, uh, his parents were talking about how they just couldn't believe that he could do all these things, and yet he was getting pretty poor grades in school. And uh, he was just just so obviously not invested in, you know, remembering who won the particular battle or whatever in a history class. Like, that's not something that he, you know, is engaging to him and so he he ends up in the end uh he ends up getting an internship instead of going to college uh and i think he's taking some nighttime classes but he ends up getting an internship in silicon valley it, i think it was google or someplace like that and uh, from his stuff with the science fair and i'm like that just makes sense why yeah. waste why why should he be wasting his time in some <laughs> like remedial uh whatever english 101 and take it so that's it's just a waste it's a waste of time Mm -hmm. and so anyway i i think this is really cool in this movie and so we find out so we get we do a time jump to mike on his first day at monsters university and uh the school of scaring and (laughs) he's he's gonna make you know it's his major right he's gonna he wants to be a scare Mm -hmm. and this is this is the course of study he's going to take yes and there's a whole bunch of clubs and it's kind of a fun sequence at the beginning yeah <laughs> I mean, it's so college you know that's just yeah classic college movie right there <laughs> yeah where did you go to college the university of utah okay yeah yeah so i was the rival school <laughs> of course much yes. years after you yeah but, uh yeah i went to byu and i had the time of my life at byu uh but uh i I don't know. It was more spiritual and social. I mean, I did learn a lot and uh, it was, I, it was one of the best times of my whole life was, it was at college. I loved college, but I would certainly never, I think for some people it's, it's not, it's not for everybody for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a bit of a different experience in college because, you know, I grew up in Salt Lake city. The university of Utah is kind of known as a commuter school. Mm-hmm. That's the category that I fit in is that for the most part, I lived at home, right. you know, and, and then I went to school and I went to work and whatnot, but, but uh, mm-hmm. I just didn't have that a whole either campus. on campus or near campus thing because, and, and, and again, I'm not alone. I, I talked to a lot mm-hmm. of people, my friends and whatnot, that just kind of did the same thing that who sure. went to the, who went to the university of Utah, but still though, it's fun in these college movies you know, to kind of get that. I mean, and I kind of had a feeling that because I was in school still, you know, and, and I had friends and I went to parties and stuff, you know, but, but, uh, and there were clubs on campus and I didn't join a fraternity, but I had friends that did and, mm-hmm. you know, fraternity row was just right there. And so that, I just think it, what they did with Masha's University was so clever because again, they, they not only, I think, studied these college movies, but they also, <laughs> had been to college themselves i think a lot of, some of them at least yeah <laughs> one thing i think i remember reading from dan scanlon he was saying that it was 
one of the challenges that they had with making this film was that many of them just went to art school. Right. <laughs> so it's very different, you know. So <laughs> 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 they weren't, I don't think they were all these clubs and all these different things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, BYU, they don't have any fraternities, but there certainly are, you know, clubs and organizations and stuff like that. I mean, it, yes. it's, it's a little bit different too, because really your, uh, our congregations, we call them wards, is kind of like your fraternity in a way i think right. it serves a lot of the social functions that there's a lot of that those functions and the structure yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and they would certainly have things at the uh at, you know your your building they'd have for like living in the morris center they would oh have, yeah like uh, the dorm I mean, whatever yeah the dorm, dorm yeah in, yeah mm-hmm. and i i worked uh my first year uh in i I was actually already a sophomore because i had um started a year early uh, in california because my family moved my senior year of high school so i started and so i had a year's worth of credit so i was a sophomore when i when i went to started college and uh and so yeah and so i worked in at the morris center on on campus uh doing the salad bar <laughs> that's my job <laughs> and i still can make a pretty mean uh fruit dip <laughs> awesome <laughs> and it's where i learned how to make jello so that was oh, very yeah. exciting excellent because <laughs> my mom was not we only got jello growing up when uh unless someone else brought it to a function we only got jello when <laughs> we were sick so that was like ah, our, sick, okay you know if you had to clear liquids yeah. or whatever <laughs> anyway, right. yeah. and so that was fun and uh yeah i just i loved i absolutely loved college so uh, it's it's i don't really relate to the parting part of it that much but i certainly relate to uh just a lot of the just being a special time for sure yeah yeah in the in the movie with a lot of excitement and anticipation and uh and he tells mike tells you know i've been waiting for this my whole life i just can't wait to get started and he he starts out with roger from the first movie being his roommate which is which is interesting randy <laughs> right you mean isn't it randy or is it you know steve buscemi yeah character yeah randall is it, it rand oh randy you're right you're right you're right right randall yeah they, right. they like no they like call him randy but it's randy but we all know yeah, it's, right. it's randall right right yeah uh yeah so randall is his roommate and uh he's just kind of blase about the whole thing uh and you see solely he's uh he's he's viewed by mike as being sort of a nepotism kind of a situation because of his family name yeah because yeah. solely comes from a heritage of scarers and and they were like top students right yeah. within the within the college of scaring at monsters U, monsters university yeah. is that so it's right like the, yeah it's like the equivalent at byu of a of a marriott let's say yeah exactly yeah. perfect yes yeah yeah someone like that <laughs> and so he kind of he looks at he's very judgmental mike is very judgmental of solely that he's lazy and that uh he didn't deserve to get there and that he's kind of kind of mike has a little bit of a a chip on his shoulder like he's better than everybody else because he studied the most right he's working the hardest yeah he's got a there's like there's a little bit of pride to him Mm -hmm. that is both good and bad (laughs) yes yes and so they end up sort of fighting with each other and they end up destroying dean hard scrabbles a scream canister that i guess is special to her and uh she is you know very upset and so she makes a deal with them uh and they end up having to be like roommates and there's this whole nerd fraternity that they end up finding called uzma kappa (laughs) is their fraternity Uh, okay (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah okay i didn't even think of that you're right yeah yeah okay (laughs) and and dean hard scrabble voiced by helen mirren i think she does a really good job oh i think she's terrific yeah yeah and they have uzma kappa they have don carlton who's the middle-aged returning student <laughs> yes <laughs> and he's fun uh you have terry and terry the terry perry headed. yeah they're the two-headed and that's sean hayes and dave foley are yeah. the voices of them you have charlie day as art 
uh, in Uzmacapa. And, uh, and then did I catch them all. And Squishy. Yes, and Squishy. That's right. Who's voiced yeah. by Peter Sohn, who would go on to direct The Good Dinosaur, Peter Sohn. Yeah. That, that's kind of fun. And isn't Peter Sohn, I would say he, he's been some other voice. I think he was the voice of, uh, was he a voice in Ratatouille? I can't he's, remember. I think he has. Let me check. He's done some other, he's done some other vocal work. He, he at also Pixar directed Canada Cloudy. Oh, that's um, right. Uh, the short. Let's see here. He was the voice of Emil in Ratatouille. Yeah. Okay, that's what I that's no. what, that's <laughs> And right. uh, let's see if there's any other. Remy's Remy's brother, right? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you can see. And also the character of Russell in Up, I believe they based that character on just what Peter Sohn looks uh-huh. like. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the picture of Peter yeah, Sohn. but yeah, he looks like Russell, yeah. or, vice, or, or vice versa. Really, I guess what it is. Russell so looks he's like, yeah. he's a really fun guy, and yeah. so yeah, so that's kind of the, your motley crew over there. And they are living. Our, our the fraternity house is actually in Squishy's basement because Squishy's mom <laughs> is involved. You know how she's in, in the picture a lot, right? And the she is, her name is Sherry, Mrs. Squibbles. Sherry Squibbles. Yeah, who's uh, voiced by Julia Sweeney. Right. <laughs> and she's funny. And she's, I think, a funny character. She's just like, just the happy mom who's just there all the time. I mean, mm-hmm. right? It's just kind of maybe, maybe a little overprotective, but she's always happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And uh, so it's a fun, fun group of nerds, your nerd fraternity going yeah. on there. And then you have Sully thrown in there. And they're kind of, it's kind of a, you better learn to get along kind of situation. And they make this deal with a hard scrabble that uh, if uh, they will enter the scare games, they make a deal that if they win the scare games, he'll be reinstated into the school uh, because he gets basically expelled from doing this. And then if they does, then he will leave. And so that's obviously really devastating for Mike. Uh, and they, of course, this is really hard for them to get along. Uh, and yeah. she tells Sully, says, one frightening, frightening face does not make a scarer, Mr. Sullivan, she says. Yes. And so, uh, he, you know, she's, she sees problems with both of them. She does. And, you know, and, and initially she comes across as like she's the villain. Mm-hmm. You know, you just think, oh, man, what a, how, Dean Hart, you know, she's horrible. I remember, you know, initially thinking that. And, and plus, she's kind of scary because she's like a, she's like a dragon creature, right? She can fly around mm-hmm. and she, she, either she can shape shift or shrink or, some, or, or, or disappear. Or, I, I don't know. Yeah. And I think that especially it seems like she could be the villain because obviously she's the counter, she's telling mike that he is wrong and that yes. he can't succeed which is normal narrative uh for uh for this kind of thing but also because we know in the in the previous film the water news was up to no good so i think that kind of yes it helps a little bit and and so they they go to the first challenge and uh they are eliminated and uh at first and uh they you know they had barely made it uh but uh the they they were just a little bit late and because the whole team had to cross the line at the same time everybody else was so behind them that uh they they had the it was these little uh kind of poisonous balls that they had to do- to to dodge and uh, but at the last minute they find out that one of the teams gets eliminated because they had a protective gel because these are like little sea urchins kind of that that sting you and then make you puff up <laughs> just like a situation <laughs> yeah and uh, <laughs> that's a fun scene just because again it's perfect for animation you know mm-hmm. i mean it's just so it's so crazy it's yeah. kind of liberating yeah this yeah and at, but after they then they have a second challenge which was a little i think is a little bit confusing about what the challenge is they have to be quiet to find this flag in the library in the library uh, it's just 
I'm like, what is, what's going on uh, here? I, that's, I, a, that's, uh, that's a weird, that's a weird scene. I, I, yeah. I, I agree. I wonder if they were kind of struggling to come up with a challenge that would be like right up their alley. So we're like, let's make one where they have to be really quiet. Yes. And, <laughs> and the librarian is like super big and super tall. And so that's kind of part of the challenge, but uh, I don't know that part. Some of this stuff with the scare games does start to lose me a little bit and gets a little boring. Yeah, it goes, it goes on, it goes on a little too long. I yeah. think it's like we get the point that, that you know they're fighting for each other, and then also if Mike and Sully, you know, if, if Uzma Kappa wins, Sully's going to be reinstated into school. Yeah, we, you know, we know we, right. we we know that it's just like where's the montage you know <laughs> yeah exactly i think so <laughs> yeah and but they find the flag and so they're seen as real scarers yeah right then they're like that they're legit and so i mean it, that's the one thing i thought with the second viewing it's like well maybe this is where the filmmakers were coming from is that they show they show a little more detail of the scare games than perhaps is necessary you know mm -hmm. really necessary but it does it illustrate the point that it gives them some credibility with their peers which they didn't have before mm -hmm. yeah and i think it's hard scrabble but i'm not positive but uh, it tells it tells sully he says you can train monsters like this all you want but you can't change who they are yeah yeah because again sully is definitely a scare but mike mike is never going to be a scare yeah he's just not yeah yeah yeah, which is again another really bold message for a film for kids <laughs> yep yep and uh, it, i mean it's but it's a really good message because there's nothing worse than being in doing something that's not who you being an inauthentic person you can ask anybody that uh you know that comes out of the closet or that that has been spending any time sort of living a life that's not authentic to who they are right like that's, their parents really want to go to law school or become yeah. a doctor or whatever and yeah makes them so miserable right it's, it's, just, it's awful and it's yeah. not that what you're doing is necessarily bad it's just not who they are it's just it's really 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 good so they're all feeling really frustrated and discouraged. Mike takes them to Monsters Incorporated and kind of gives them, gets them inspired in a, in a, in a sequence there. And, uh, and then uh, there's a maze. I really liked this maze. I think it's really funny. And it's like, avoid the teenager. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I like that. You yeah. know, you can scare the child, but avoid the cynical avoid. at all costs. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I mean. <laughs> uh, and then you have uh, Hard Scrabble again saying that I know for a fact uh, one of you is not is not scary. And Sully tells her he's the heart and soul of the team, and she says, "Do you think he's scary?" and again it's just it's really it's a really interesting moment a really uh a conflicting moment and yeah, yeah i like it and so sully basically there's a another challenge where sully ends up rigging this scare test so that they will win and sully ends up becoming expelled and uh mike uh breaks into the lab uh, and because he's just so determined to t to uh, to prove that he's scary, and he, there's a door there. It's like a lab for the doors, and he ends up in a summer camp, and that's when he realizes that he can't scare these kids. Yeah. And despite his trying, and uh, it uh, it's a really devastating moment, and uh, Sully goes in there and he scares all the kids filling all the canisters and uh he ends up burning mike's monsters university hat uh which i think is pretty symbolic yeah it's symbolic and that whole sec sequence is so interesting to me too again i noticed it the first time i watched it and it was really emphasized this this rewatch but when they go through the door into the camp i mean clearly it's nighttime you know because that's when the monsters do their scaring but it's like they just changed the lighting to uh, overall because it, it just to help with the uh, 
the 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 emotions of it because it's really heavy, you know. And you just mm-hmm. you, you know, and you, and you feel it too. Mm-hmm. Just just how, just I mean, because clearly it's night, but it's not like pretty night, you know. It's not like starry night. It's more like gray and yeah, life sucks. Kind of, kind of <laughs> night. There is a distinct <laughs> difference between the human world and the monster world, which yeah. is just yeah, see. which again, yeah. and just just great art you know just mm-hmm. one of those great art moments from 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 the magicians at pixar but yeah that's that is it's, it's a heavy scene it's, it's it's sad and shocking but also i think again shocking to me because again like i can't believe that they're sharing this kind of a message <laughs> yeah i and i just love the scene between sully and mike where sully says look mike i know how you feel and mike says don't do that please don't do that you don't know how i feel and he says mike calm down and then mike says monsters like you have everything you don't have to be good you can mess up over and over again and the whole world loves you and so he says mike and mike says you'll never know what it's like to fail because you were born a sullivan and then i really like this he says yeah i'm a sullivan i'm the sullivan that flunked every test the one who got kicked out of the program, the one who was so afraid to let everyone down that I cheated and I lied. And he says, Mike, I'll never know how you feel, but you're not the only failure here. Yeah. Which I think is really like, I'm practically tearing up just reading those because yeah. it's such a good scene. It's so powerful. And, and that what's so interesting to, to me too, is that both of them fail. Yeah. You know, it's not just like there's one of them and the other one, yeah, they, they they both they both fail and they mm-hmm. and they both get kicked out of the program. They're kicked out of school. Yeah, and you just think of it like how easy it is to judge other people and think, oh, you have it easy. You have got everything. You, uh, you know, you. And I've even, I mean, in a small, I've had people that were very jealous of the fact that I got in Rotten Tomatoes and you know and i feel kind of bad because i didn't do anything that is i mean i worked really really hard but not any harder than they did uh and i just got lucky uh that it all worked out and uh and you know how did you do it how did you you know how did you and i and they don't get it and they got refu- one of my friends got refused three times and i i feel bad uh but you know we all have our struggles and we all have our moments where things work out yeah and uh it seems like oh the other person has it so easy but you're only usually what happens is you're comparing your worst to their best and instead of that you're you know worst to worst kind of thing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's and, and it's, then it's maybe a, oh go ahead i'm sorry it, I don't no, mean to it's, interrupt. it's a very emotionally true moment absolutely and you know like with this critic thing i mean and also just like with within the movie I and mean, it's one of those things maybe the path that you think you want to be on isn't necessarily the best path for you yeah. i mean i'm not saying that you know these people shouldn't be film critics or whatever but i mean it's that that's what this movie talks about and and yeah. i think we can look we can see applications to that mm-hmm. in our lives from from either from our own life or from the life of people that we know yeah yeah, it made me think about uh, this one story that they told in uh, our general conference. I can't even remember. I think it was actually President Monson, our prophet, who said it, talked about this one man who uh, gave up playing violin. He sold his violin so that he could be a missionary. And and that story always kind of broke my heart. <laughs> it's uh-huh. just like, oh, like i wish that he could do both (laughs) and and sometimes you can do both and sometimes you can't and you have to make sacrifices for uh of something that's good in order to do something better or something that is you know more your calling or whatever but it kind of made me think about that that uh that uh something that you loved a dream kind of a thing that ends up uh you end up finding something better uh by uh by taking an uh, taking a path less uh, less traveled by right yeah mm-hmm. yes. yeah so i i th- i think that is very honest writing and and really good and i do too, I do too. uh so then we uh get there's a ross cameo i guess ross cameo. <laughs> yeah 
and Roz <laughs> shows up, which is so funny. Yeah. Making sure there's no uh, kid stuff. Yeah. And they both end up getting expelled. And Mike says, it's time I leaved, I left the greatness to other monsters and be okay with being okay. Which is another really great little thought. Yeah. Because most of us are, are going to be ordinary people. <laughs> yeah. Not everyone is going to be a superstar, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's good. I mean, we, we need all the ordinary mothers and fathers and friends that we can <laughs> to have. Yeah. Uh, and Sully tells Mike, he says, Mike, you're not scary, but you are fearless, which I love that as well. I love it too. <laughs> and uh, they end up going to work in the mail room. Yeah, uh, they, Masters Inc. Incorporated. And then, then we finally get the montage, you know, mm -hmm. th that that uh, maybe we could have had a little earlier during the, all the scare game stuff. But this montage is one of my favorite things in the film. Next yeah. to you know, kind of the whole dramatic scene when they both talk about you know how they how they failed. Because yeah, that's just so brilliant and so well done. This is so cute, delightful because I, I love how they I love how they do the art because they just are showing. If I'm not mistaken. If I'm remembering correctly, because I mean, I just watched it, but they're not, they're just showing like photographs. Right. Yeah. And, and both Mike and Sully look so happy. You know, they're, they're, they're working together. They've, they've established this friendship and Mike's doing what he can to support Sully, of course, but they're just, I mean, you know, they, they, and they start in the mail room and don't they get a promotion to work in the cafeteria or they get promoted to be janitors, you know, as they're mm -hmm. working their way up. And every, in every stage of this, they're showing them doing their work or serving others and they're happy. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. just love that because you never saw that part of them when they were in school, mm -hmm. you know, which I think, again, was just another way to, to demonstrate that you know college probably wasn't for either of them mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah. that's one thing i learned as an adult i think when i was younger i thought that you would get more satisfaction out of your career than i think is actually a reality i think even if you have the most sort of fancy job in the world like say you have something that seems very glamorous let's say you were in a you're an actress in a, in a or an actor in a movie or a broadway singer something that sounds very glamorous it's actually not you end up you end up doing the same thing over and over and over like yeah. you're broad probably you do the same you know show yeah. over and over and over and over again you do the same yeah. and so you don't get happiness and this is one of the big problems i actually had with la la land is because i thought that the whole message of the movie was that your dream of a particular let's face it job uh was going to make you happy as opposed to the love of your in your life was the thing that would make you happy yeah and and they didn't fight enough like that's so lucky when i i think it's uh the, I think it's in the movie Always, a Steven Spielberg movie, yes. where they says to the Richard Dreyfuss character, it says, this is love. Do you think this happens every day? And I've always thought about that, you know, that we take it for granted, the love that we have in our life, our family, our friends, other things. Do you think this happens every day? Because it doesn't. And that's the thing that gives you real happiness. I mean, that's why so many people in Hollywood are, you know, like drug addicts, and because it's not... It's yeah. not actually like it doesn't bring you joy. It doesn't bring you people happiness. Think, yeah. People think it gives you joy. And I'm not saying you should be miserable in your job, but uh, so much of what brings you joy is the people that you're working with, the things you're doing together as a team. And I think that's what Mike and, and Sully end up sort of learning. You see them, like you're saying, you see that they are happy as janitors, as cafeteria workers, mm -hmm. as, you know, and then they have the scare tryouts that they go. And he, when he crosses that line uh, and into the scare room yeah. and, and Sully says, are you coming coach? It's a really great moment. It is. It is. It's a great moment. Uh, yeah. It's really good. And so, yeah, I really enjoy this movie. I think it's really underrated underappreciated i think it's also really 
pretty to look at. I think the colors, the, you know, when you get sort of this fluorescent moments in the, uh, in the, some of the scare uh, games that are really fun to the way the colors are. Uh, I really enjoy that. I, I think the music is bubbly and fun mm -hmm. uh, and it just has a big heart. And I, when I see it get kind of, I feel like it's usually put down in rankings below uh, in, you know, sometimes below brave sometimes below uh, and below cars too. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, around, maybe not below cars too. <laughs> no, I mean, right there with it though. Go with it. Yeah. And I think it's way better than cars too. And I personally think it's way better than brave. Oh yeah. And, I do too. I do too. <laughs> and I really, you know, I'm with, you know, as well, why, why one of the reasons we're doing this podcast, I we hope that, you know, our, our great listeners are going to, rethink the movie or give it another shot because yeah. it's you know i wonder if some of the criticisms were because it's so different than monsters inc mm -hmm. but that i think though really is its strength and mm -hmm. and uh and again that it's just so brave <laughs> speaking of brave but it's so you know <laughs> willing or courageous and willing to bring a real a very realistic viewpoint to modern life yeah and i was listening to a review from when it came out uh from uh mark ellis over uh in uh the schmoes channel and what was interesting to me is that his big criticism was the movie didn't make him laugh and so i don't know if that was part of the problem and it may have been the marketing it may have been that uh, it may be just having billy crystal as a voice you expect to be sort of uproariously laughing and it isn't a movie that uh, I mean, there's some there's some little jokes. There's like you some have, laughs. Yeah. There, there's uh, squishes and and his, his mom uh, is dating the yeah the middle aged guy. That stuff uh, with his cap, I think, is all pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some jokes, but it's not a joke heavy movie. No. Uh, it's a uh, it's more of a uh, it's more of a thoughtful, fun movie. Yeah, because again, you're thinking, oh, maybe this is going to be, you know animal house or something you know mm -hmm. i mean you know that animal house is all is all laughs but i mean but uh it's it's really a, a its own thing yeah i would just challenge yeah challenge people to go give it another shot uh and see if you can kind of see it from this perspective because it's it's definitely i think one of the underrated so uh this has been really fun to talk about i i really i really do like this film and it'll be fun to to pass the podcast off. i'm gonna tag Dan Scanlon on Twitter. I think he's on there and let him know how much we appreciate right, it. And how much we love this movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, where can people find you on social media and all that fun stuff? All right, Rachel, I'm on Twitter at Stanford Clark. And I also have a movie blog and podcast at movies, past and present.com. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's reviews, all of our social media and on iTunes and YouTube and at Hallmarkies podcast. And uh, if you're listening on iTunes, if you can give us your ratings and reviews, really appreciate that. And if you're listening on YouTube, if you can give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and consider joining us on Patreon. We have our Facebook group, which is a lot of fun for $5 and over. We talk about uh, more than just Hallmark. We talk about all this animation fun stuff as well. You can uh, request uh, a family movie night review. You can, with a certain tier, you can request a podcast for uh, Stanford or one of my other uh, guests, depending on the movie, uh, that we can talk about on a podcast. And you can have me with a certain, with $15 a month, you can have me uh, be reviewing an entire season of a TV show, which is a lot because I normally don't watch television. Uh, so very much. So that would be really cool. And so check that out. Also check out our merch store where you can get Animation Junkie t-shirts and uh and so that's really fun at tpublic slash hallmarkies so lots of fun stuff going on let us know what you think uh do you think that we're crazy saying this sun underrated <laughs> uh, maybe you think it's overrated let us know in the comments and on twitter we would love to talk about it and uh, thanks again and uh, next month we will uh, we'll be back uh, and let us know your ideas for underrated obscure uh, animation and uh, so it should be good. So thanks, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Hey, thanks. Bye. Bye.